You start with observation. You watch how they move. You watch how they sit. You watch how they bend. Just watch them. Doctor, I can't sit for more than five minutes. Of course, you've been running an hour late, so I've been in your waiting room for an hour sitting quite comfortably, and, you know, and then you tell me your history, and, and there's something wrong. Movement patterns of flexion and extension. Now, there's other movements, but they're all combined movements. Side bending, rotation, hurts, no matter what your pattern. But what distinguishes the mechanical patterns are those that are aggravated on flexion and those that are aggravated on extension. And I'm going to come back to that, and we're going to break that out in some more detail. The nerve root irritative tests are critical. The common one, straight leg raise, and the other one, the sort of straight leg raise upside down, the femoral stretch. Now, this is such an important issue. This is such an, uh, an elemental test. It's been described as the most accurate back test of all, is straight leg raise. So my question now, and I have to take this little sidestep, is what constitutes a positive straight leg raise? Let me go up to my favorite. Let me go to the row behind the row that I'm talking to. Somebody way in the back. Tell me what constitutes a positive straight leg raise. Sorry? I got to, you have to shout your weight. 20 degree raise. 20 degree raise causing what? Severe back pain and leg pain. 20 degree raise producing severe back pain and leg pain. Anybody want to stay on that team? Because you are absolutely wrong. And doesn't that just annoy the daylights out of you? You were nice enough to volunteer and then I shoot you down. That's just not fair. But that is exactly what I hear from most family doctors. That is exactly what I hear and why straight leg raising, people just don't get it. Number one, sorry. Um, we're, we're 45 degrees causing back pain. 45 degrees causing back pain. Anybody want to stay on that team? A positive straight leg raise. Remember, what does the physical do? The physical supports the history. That's fundamental. A positive straight leg raise is reproduction of the patient's typical leg pain. There's a study published in the Chinese literature. It's fascinating. Somebody argued with me and they brought me this article and said, see, and by golly what it said was, if there's no pressure on the root, they only get back pain, not leg pain. Straight leg raise is a measure of nerve root irritation. That's what it's talking about. So if you tell me your patient has a positive straight leg raise, you are telling me they have a nerve root irritation. Whatever root it may be, but it's an irritated root. That's what gives you a positive test. Back pain alone is not relevant. It may cause back pain, but that is not a positive test. Positive SLR is reproduction of the patient's typical leg dominant pain. Okay, here's my, here's my question. I'm going to pick somebody. Oh, yeah. One of, yeah, I got you. Good. This is a tough guess. Tough question. I'm going to present you a patient who has back dominant pain, who has no leg pain at all, never did have. Not once, not a day. That's the patient zero, case three, no leg pain. What is the incidence of a positive straight leg raise in that patient? Never happens. Never happens because you can't reproduce the typical leg pain they never had. And yet I get people say, well, 50%, 30%. It doesn't work like that. If you don't have leg pain, I can't reproduce your leg pain. Therefore, you cannot have a positive test. Now, do you do it anyway? Absolutely you do. Every back gets a straight leg raise test done. Even if I anticipate it to be normal, I do it anyway. Why? because my physical is a check on my history. I, had a, I, I ran a course, actually it was, out, it was in Edmonton, and we had real live patient on the table. It was all very exciting, a smaller group of family doctors. And I asked the woman her history, and it was, it was all about her back pain, blah, 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 blah. And then I did her straight leg raise, and she said, oh, that hurts, that hurts. And I said to the group, that's her back pain, it doesn't count. And she said, no, that's my leg pain. 
This is after I've taken her history. That's my leg pain. And I said, but, but you said you didn't have leg pain. She said, true, I knew you were teaching a back course. I didn't think you wanted to hear about my leg pain. <laughs> now, after you get done feeling a bit stupid, you realize what a great test this was, because it immediately took me back to my history, and I said, right, I didn't get it right. Let's start again. Where is your pain the worst? And off we go. So the, the, the physical exam is a backup. Second thing you did wrong, it's not 20, it's not 30, it's not 45, it's any level you want. Now think about this. You know, the physios teach, well, it can't be within the first 20, 20 degrees because there isn't any root movement in 20 degrees. Remember the last sciatic you saw? They're like this. They can't even straighten their leg out much less lift at 10 degrees, they are so irritated that this is how they're stuck. Just straightening their leg is enough to give them their leg pain. So yes, if I get it at 20, it's a positive 30, 40, 50. Now, what if I get typical leg pain at 90 degrees of elevation? I lift the leg to 90 degrees, and the patient says, that's my typical pain. It's not hamstring tightness, it's my typical pain. Is that a positive test? Yes. Is it clinically relevant? No. I'm not going to rush off and operate on somebody with 90 degrees of SLR, but it's still a positive test. So get the, get, recognize what you're seeing. You're seeing root irritation of varying degrees. And it's the clinical relevance, the 20, 30, 40, 60, that matters. It's not, is it a positive test? It's always a positive test if it reproduces the patient's typical leg pain. Any SLR questions before we... Do you use the lack of flexion as well? It's all passive. It's all passive. It's me lifting their leg. I never waste my time saying to the patient, lift your leg. Every back patient I know, as soon as they start to, oh, God, so I, no, I don't even waste my time. It's me doing it. I lift your leg and you tell me if it hurts. Is there any correlation between sitting versus supine SLR? In terms of straight leg raising? Yeah. Yes. Uh, come on up here for a second. Well, you I don't want to ask the question. That's the last time now. Yeah. <laughs> this, this serves two purposes. One, it answers a very important question, and two, it stops anybody else from asking me questions. <laughs> come sit on the edge. Can serve it done. Yeah. <laughs> Just sit and face the crowd. Sir. Okay, now. We're going to, you know, one of the things that all of us do is in order to test straight leg raising, you know, particularly in the patient with pain disorder, you want to distract them so that, that they don't know what you're doing. So what I'll do is I'll lift his leg when he's sitting down. They look at this. My goodness. All right. That's 90 degrees of straight leg raising. All right. Absolutely. No problem. Yeah, I, I do this. I, I test the Babinski, which you have to do. Plantar response is mandatory. We'll come to that. I usually take the shoe off. You know, before, you know, whatever technique you want to use. Right. But the point is now I've got full straight leg raising. So here's my patient who is comp claiming and, you know, I worry about his validity. So I'll get you to lie down now. Okay. So now he was very comfortable. Just put your legs down flat. He was very comfortable when I just did this. Now I'm going to lift your leg and I want you to tell me when you start to feel tightness in your hands. Yeah, no. All right. It's uncomfortable. All right. What elevation am I at? I'm not even at 90 yet. And he's already bitching at me. Right? <laughs> Which basically means he's a comp claim and he's a phony. <laughs> and, he's, and he's a phony. Right? What's wrong with what I just did? Who wants to tell me the huge mistake I just made, I just made, in my physical exam? Absolutely, absolutely. As soon as I do this, which basically rotates the pelvis, I've changed, watch it, the straight leg raise. There's always a 20 degree variance, a minimum 20 degree variance. I can do that without rehearsing it because it's always the same. When I do straight leg raise, I always flex the opposite hip in order to compensate for this. Then I can do the sitting test and now it's a valid comparison. So if at this point you're screaming at me, yeah, you are a comp case. <laughs> but you weren't. You were actually an honest, decent human being. 
<laughs> I knew I liked you. Yeah. <laughs>